everyone, um, and you're very welcome to um, our webinar this evening. I think there are more people still to come, but we shortly after uh, seven o'clock, so we're going to get started. My name is Ailish Hennessy, and together with uh, my colleagues Zara Farahani and Liliana Mbeve, we are um, th the team working on a, a research project looking at children's engagement in creative activities. We've organized several events as part of um, this research project. This evening's event is one of them. And we're absolutely delighted this evening to welcome Erica Chibi from uh, Dunleary Rathdown Libraries, um, who is going to talk to us about libraries as creative community spaces that are welcoming uh, to families um, and, and children. And we hope that you will uh, get something um, out of this and that you will be encouraged in this post-COVID world to go and uh, visit uh, your local library and to engage in some of the creative activities uh, there. So, um, Erica, thank you very much indeed. I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Eilish, and thank you, Eilish, Sarah and Liliana for the opportunity to be here this evening. Um, and welcome to everyone who is here. I'm looking forward to showing you the many opportunities and services that your local library has on offer and can provide, and especially what is available for children. From art and reading workshops to story time, Lego classes and science workshops, to music shows and classes, there really is a huge amount on offer at your local library, mostly for free, in fact, almost all for free. And since the pandemic, quite a lot of it is available online. So there is a lot more accessibility. Um, so you might have an idea of what the library was in, in the past if you don't regularly visit the library now and you might think that the library is a place where we all have to be very quiet and no noise no children are allowed made no noise and it's all about just reading dusty books well i um we'd be glad to know that's long gone and we encourage um children and families to visit libraries in fact we really want them to we we want everyone from the community to visit the libraries um, and to enjoy their visit and to take part it is more than just about books which is obviously a huge part and a very important part of the library but it is also a community space and more importantly it is your community space so i'd like to start off by giving an overview of public libraries in ireland and the full range of what they offer before i go into libraries as a creative sp and space especially for children so as you can see here, the mission for our public libraries is it's inspiring, connecting and empowering communities. And that is from the Libraries Ireland, our public libraries 2022 strategy. And I, I am for those of you who regular, vis, regularly visit libraries, I'm sure you'll um, agree that we are very much living up to our mission, even during um, the COVID pandemic. So public libraries in Ireland, so I'm this tiny bit over here. Um, so to start, there are about 330 library branches in Ireland and about 20 mobile libraries, usually in Larry, in, in Bands, sorry, who, who visit the local communities, who, uh, especially the more rural communities. In Dunleary Rathdown Libraries, where I'm based in the Lexicon, we have eight branch libraries and a library headquarters, which is housed here in the Lexicon. Other counties will have more or less library branches, depending on the size of that county. Um, so while each library varies in size and stock, Every li library space is open to everyone in the community and is one of the few democratic spaces welcoming everyone and without expectation of spending any money. Um, and now as restrictions are decreasing, we urge you all to come back into libraries and we welcome you back. And like the, li like the photographs now I have here, which is actually of their junior library in the lexicon, our seating is back. Um, it has been a, a year or so since we last had seating, so it is fantastic to see the, the families come back and sit and enjoy reading together and doing their homework or just enjoying the views. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so as I said, there's no expectation to spend uh, money in the libraries. It's one of the great um, community spaces for that. And in fact, in 2018, we abolished library fines uh, for the late return of books completely. Um, and in, in, if anything, we now uh, are more likely to get our books returned to us because library users are no longer fearful of coming back and possibly being in trouble with us you won't be in trouble, please do come back. We would much prefer you to come to the library, even if your books have been late coming back. You don't even need a library card to visit the library or even take part in some of our workshops. In fact, most of our workshops, story times or other activities available. Um, so we do highly recommend signing up for the library card because you will just have access to so many um, online resources. And of course, all the library items within the libraries. 
All you need when signing up for a library card is a photo ID and proof of address, neither of which we keep a copy of. So it's, it takes a few minutes to do, well worth it. But one of the greatest services we provide now, and this has happened within the past 10 years, is um, every library is connected. And so we have every public library in the Republic of Ireland is connected. So our local service now has a nationwide reach. So if you if you have your local library is a small library, it might not have a huge book stock. You might not have the book, especially if it's a more specialized book or item. It doesn't matter. You can just reserve it from another library. So it could be from a library, um, one of the libraries here, like the Lexicon. And within um, a few days to a few weeks, the book will be with you. Um, so which basically means now you have access to over 12 million library items. There's very rarely you'd, you'd be unable to get a book you're looking for, and it is all for free. And the great thing about that also means that if you're down, let's say you're taking a staycation down to Kerry, beautiful Kerry, and you take, you decide you want a book, go into the local library, and with your library card, even if Dublin is your local library, you can still use it. You can take out a book there, and then you can bring it back to your local library, let's say in Dublin, and bring, bring um, that book back there. But potentially, every library could become your local library. So do visit us. We, we really do like it. Um, libraries are also a community hub for information about community services is advertised that could be found easily. So if you're new to a community and you're not sure um, about what's available in your local community, visit the library. The library staff, we're, we, we're experts in finding information and advertising our information. and we want to be able to provide whatever you need to you as easily and quickly as possible. There is no entry requirement and everyone is welcome, whether, as I said, whether you have a library card or not. So oh, we also have an extensive online resources. Every local library will. Once you have a library card, you, um, once you signed up for a library card, you'll have access to eBooks and e-audio books through BarBox, um, online courses through universal classes, language learning, press reader for newspapers, um, Libby, the Libby app for magazines and comics, especially if your children are into um, graphic novels and comics, or maybe you are yourself, of course, um, and um, online references like Encyclopedia Britannica, which is fantastic for school projects. This is all available for free, just with your library cards and online, which right now, as we're going through the COVID restrictions, has been an absolute lifesaver. So moving on. Libraries as a creative space, especially for our children. I included this quote from the Libraries Ireland website. I thought it just, it really going to give an idea of what to expect. So libraries are highly interactive spaces where children can access content as well as books, digital experiences, as well as literary stimulation. So it isn't just about the books. It is about digital literacy. It's about crafts, workshops. It's about the space. It's about exploring all of their interests. Um, and having the opportunity to do that. So they can avail of engaging and creative activities for children. So libraries will often host workshops and programs that change seasonally, which includes summer reading programs, storytelling sessions, creative workshops, book clubs, etc. You can be sure to find something to interest your child. We've had here in the lexicon everything from teacher printing, which was very, very popular, to kite making over the summer, to book making, in fact, at one stage. Um, you can ask questions and you can get expert answers. Library staff from all levels, this is our job, but this is what we want to do for you. Uh, we, we take the time to continuously um, educate ourselves on what books are available for all levels and for children, what might be interested. You will find in your local library, the staff are creating activity sheets, they're creating recommended reading guides. So for instance, um, Dogman is such a popular book at the moment. And one of my library st um, staff members, um, one of my library staff created a, you finish the Dogman or you can't find the Dogman, what to read next. And it's just different ideas. And we did that for a number of different genres. And you'll find there's lots of resources available in local libraries and online to help with this. Um, so you might already have access to online information, but your local librarian is there to impart their wisdom. And parents do take um, advantage of our experience in the world of books and dealing with children's reading needs. I'll also later on be, just, um, be pointing to children's books and um, children's book Ireland, Books Ireland, who are on another fantastic resources for um, ensuring the love of reading within your child. Um, 
using the library as the perfect place to get to know new people and get involved with the literary life of the town of, or in the city. So it is a community and social space for meeting other, um, other people, but especially other parents, especially when you're a new parent, um, which can be quite isolating. Um, but our lo local uh, libraries would often have baby book clubs and story times, which is a lovely time to come down with your child and yourself just for that break and to, to take part in that. The library is a place where parents can go with their children for dedicated reading time and to meet and converse with their other parents and children. And I'm sure if you've been to any local library, you will have seen that. The children love it, especially after school. They love just using the, the library space as a place to, to really enjoy themselves and to, to really enjoy themselves and just to, to relax after school time. And some of them even say, use the library as a um, place to do their homework and have homework clubs. And it's something we do encourage a lot of libraries when where they have the space um, will will encourage that and hopefully as I said when, as restrictions decrease we'll see more of that going on. So what else is available for children? Um, there's well there's children's books of all ages. We have uh, reading, we have literary uh, books for all reading levels when you're starting to read. We have picture books, baby board books, um, we have a huge collection of non-fiction books for all subject matters. Um, and continuously being updated as well. We have classics, we have graphic novels, every library has access to this. And as I said, if you can't find a specific book you'd like in your li local library, you will have, your, your the library staff will be able to reserve it from another library for you. There's usually CDs and games and children's activities, which we'll get onto later or shortly. Um, and there's also computers and internet access for children with um, parental supervision that is available. So if, if um, it's not available at home for whatever, reason um, you'll be able to do so in the library and some libraries are also introducing hub, um, iPads to be used in the library as well for um, that are safe to use for children and also for adults depending on which um, what the parent selects for it. There's also online activities currently at the moment you, you might have seen um, you probably have heard the news about the um, throughout, throughout the past 18 months of libraries having online story time and um, summer activities um, and like, for instance, Queen Union Now, which is our national day of uh, creative, free creative play, which I'll get on to later, had um, for the last two years have, has had everything online and it's been a resounding success. Um, and it, it really shows how libraries have, even our physical doors may have been closed for a long time, but we pivoted straight onto the online content and resources and um, our library users joined us very quickly and were we're very, um, very, very happy to take part and enjoy it during what was, as we all know, quite a trying time. Um, so every child can access books through their li um, library and experience the benefits of reading and storytelling in a warm and safe environment, which also fosters a very strong sense of community. A child's love of books may begin at home, but the library is a perfect place, in pub a perfect public space, I should say, in which child can share their love of reading. Um, there are a number of national initiatives that ensure that all public libraries are striving to build a creative and welcoming space for library users. Some of them you may have, or if, if you go to your library, especially if it's summer, you may know some of these already, such as Summer Stars. Um, one of the main ones is the Right to Read initiative. That is the, the main one we use for children and family. So it's, it's um, and then the National Literacy Initiative. We're, so we're working with our main governing bodies, libraries put together activities, workshops and other enticing events under four distinct programs. So we see here the spring into story time, which usually takes place around April. Summer Stars, which is our probably our most popular and most well-known of a library program. Um, and that takes place across the summer months, usually July and August. So sometimes we do start in June. There is a children's book um, festival, which takes place in October. So you'll see in the next coming month, you'll probably see a lot of um, notifications for events, both for schools and for families. And then lastly, in December, our newest one, which is family time at your library. And obviously for um, last year, I think we, we were quite restricted what we could do. But the year before that, we had some lovely in-house um, library events. So let's bring it to story time, as I said, usually takes place in April. There are many storytelling events to encourage reading and it's encouraging not just reading for the child but for the family reading together and to, for the, the family, for the parents and for the children and the grandparents and the whole extended family to really just enjoy sharing books and stories together. It's an annual celebration of families reading together and it's Summer Stars, as I said, is an extremely popular reading programme. 
So children would register at their local library and they get a little reading cart um, and they'd be encouraged to read um, books and it can be any books. And once they've completed eight books, they bring the library back, it's stamped and put into, in, a lot of libraries would have had some kind of treasure chest. And they might get a little reward at the end. So a pencil or notebook, sometimes a swimming bag. Um, the children loved, and I know in our in our branch in the lexicon, the children would love um, stamping their cards. That was probably their favorite bit. Um, uh, as well as putting it in the treasure chest, we did have a treasure, treasure chest for that. At the end of the Summer Stars program, then we usually have a number of events as well as spot prizes um, and other prizes. So um, obviously for this past, these past two summers, we haven't been able to have online, um, in-person events, excuse me. We have had online events uh, with author talks and um, many different author talks of different variety and very well attended. Um, but in, in summer 2019, we did have um, in, in our library, our final one was a monster doodle. So we had a number of children, they were in, they were creating a big artwork on, on a big huge sheet of paper and it was just their own doodles and having fun. Um, I think it was one of the few times we were allowed to have music on the library. Um, and luckily the other libraries were absolutely fine and enjoying and enjoyed the children enjoying themselves. Um, so the next the Children's Book Festival, as I said, we have that coming up this month. Um, and the library service, I mean, we've been organizing this festival for many years and in many authorities, it's a central focus of their annual programming the calendar. So events and speakers are hosted online and in libraries across the country in October, with something scheduled for readers of all ages and interests. Um, so we've had author visits, craft days, story time sessions, book clubs, movie days and STEM days, all kind of around different books. Obviously, this year and last year, it's going to be online. Um, for families, um, in, for, for instance, for families this year in, in Dunleary Rest Sounds, we have exclusive videos from Alan Nolan, a very popular illustrator and author with our um, library users, Ushi McGann, Paddy Donnelly, Shane Hegarty and Tina Dempsey, and they'll be available on our YouTube channel. So even if Taylor um, Libraries isn't your local library, you're more than welcome to visit our YouTube channel and see the videos when they come out. Um, so, and if you keep an eye on your library's website, you'll find out what's happening throughout the month for this. Um, there's also a number of school events, again, with local authors and illustrators. Um, the school events are really, really popular. Um, and like the last uh, one, the Family Time Extra Library, that is usually taking place in December. As I said, it's one of our newest parts of that initiative. And this is, it's similar to the Spring in, um, into Story Time in that it is encouraging families to read together, but it's also encouraging families to come and visit the library together. So there will be activities to attract um, parents um, to the library with their children, such as family craft workshops and story time, but specifically for parents and children. Um, these family events and activities take place in libraries during the month of December, um, but this year, obviously, um, uh, there might be some restrictions to what can happen. Certainly, hope, we're hoping in 2022 it can go back to its usual programming. Um, as I said, is to support the involvement of the whole family in children's reading. So going on, as I mentioned, schools events. So schools. Um, play a really important uh, part, um, part of libraries. It's a really important link for children and families. There's many, most libraries will have um, some form of school events and workshops. Um, so for instance, uh, again, with the Dunley Rathdown libraries over the summer, before summer start started, we had about five local um, primary schools who took part in three workshops um, with an author, Lucinda Jacob, um, author and poet, and uh, uh, an illustrator. Uh, under the guidance of Sarah Webb, and they created uh, poetry of different types of poetry and artwork relating to the near Rathdown, especially the sea. And um, in fact, you'll see a picture at the end of the, the slides of some of the wonderful um, jellyfish they made from recycled plastic bottles. There was a fantastic initiative for the children and they got to have their work displayed in the library over the summer. So it was really exciting for them to come visit and see um, it's just an exhibition of their work. Um, schools can also do have, we can also have school tours and we're starting to be able to hopefully, hopefully allow some small classes back in and class visits. Um, and this can be for secondary school um, students as well. They can come and um, tour and see what's 
facilities are available to students. So there might be the children's computer area where they might be able to do their homework, study spaces, and also the reference section is really important for school projects. And also the local history, a lot of libraries would have some form of local history uh, folders available to, or, or reference material. And some of the, um, the larger library branches might also have local um, local history section so in the lexicon we have on our fifth floor we have an entire local history section generally open for um it's generally used by adults but we do have secondary school students who do for especially for history cbas junior cert level um uh, also for teachers they can have have a library card and that means they will be able to take up more books than usual the block library card for longer they can take up books for their class to read together and classroom sets and it, again it's just encouraging reading for and, and access to books for all our students and all our children um oh, we get on from that one of the other partnerships um we really like at the moment and it's been fantastic in the past year since um since it's inception is music generation and libraries partnership so music generation uh, it's a national partnership program whose mission is to create inspiring experiences for children and young people through music and uh, they have been it's been rolling out for the past few years throughout ireland uh, i think a um, the majority of uh, local authorities now have a music generation linked to it and if not hopefully soon they will with the local, they, the the music generation, um, the local music generation is usually with the local council, but linked very much to the libraries. And there's often been either concerts. Um, a number of the libraries also would would handle the instrument hire of music generation, and um, host early years music classes for babies and their adults. Um, and this went on throughout the pandemic, so it'll be online because um, again, it's it's about. We were all uh, restricted to home and homeschooling. It was all about giving experiences and, and a bit of normality and a bit of fun uh, for parents and children throughout this. Um, going back to hopefully uh, in, in person activities coming up uh, in, the, in hopefully over the next coming year. So there'll be uh, music workshops for children, instrument, instrument taster workshops, which is great if you have a child who's really interested in music and not sure what they like. It's a really nice way to kind of come along and, and meet uh, musicians with different instruments and try them out. There's also the um, concerts. They can come to the local library and enjoy concerts um, by local musicians. And maybe um, if they're learning as well, they might get to take part in the concerts. So just a few examples throughout Ireland of what's been going on with these generations. So Waterford Library, they have uh, the Chaos and Calm, Move Your Body and Calm Your Mind. So this is um, over the pandemic. There was four weeks of creative and interactive music and movement designed to help children feel connected, burn some energy, and finally wind down with some soothing songs. Um, South Dublin Libraries, um, they have a very active um, music generation in South Dublin. They offer early years music classes for babies and their adults in partnership with the libraries. Um, and again, usually in the libraries that you'd have um, in the actual library spaces and a number of the South Dublin Libraries would host these classes. Obviously it's online at the moment. Um, Kilkenny County Council Library Services, they had um, a series of early years music as well, music videos for age three to five. This is during the 20, 2020 lockdowns. And that was last August. Um, and then, yeah, so it, um, and the Dealer Lexicon, I said we have, um, and throughout Dealer Libraries, we had a number of instrument taster workshops when, when this pre, pre COVID and concerts. There was a regular, um, we had regular events with Music Generation and not just Lexicon, but throughout all our branches in Dealer. The other services, and we do have quite a lot of them, um, book clubs. Uh, book clubs, creative writing workshops. So, um, well, sorry, excuse me. Going back to book clubs, uh, a number of libraries will offer some form of book clubs, whether it's children's book clubs, uh, baby book clubs, um, teen book clubs, adults book clubs, online book clubs. Um, there's usually uh, one that is, especially now with um, so many being online, there's usually one that's accessible and where we hope that be accessible. And if not, um, Maybe if uh, you could ask your local library if, if they would be interested or if, they, if there would be a demand to set one up. Um, creative writing workshops. Uh, for example, for teenagers especially, uh, a number of libraries have links with fighting words and they, they do um, regular creative writing workshops. They um, pony their skills with um, uh, writers and write, uh, writing, writer and author facilitators. And uh, sometimes they produce their own e-zines or their own work as well. 
but it's also creative writing workshops um, during the library tree at the library for all ages um, in a number of branches. So this might be the case of just one, a once off uh, working with an author and just creating a short book, especially for young um, younger children. We've done it ourselves in the Lax Country in our family days. And it's, it's really proven great fun for the little ones because they get to draw and um, they get to illustrate their stories as well. Many libraries uh, would have had Lego clubs. Again, of course, everything is slightly, um, uh, we've had to shut that down at the moment, but hopefully it'll be back. But a number of library um, services have Lego competitions. I know Kerry currently, Kerry libraries are currently doing a, a, a Lego competition. I think it's the architecture of Kerry. So um, if, if you're if Kerry, if uh, your local library in Kerry um, is in Kerry, maybe that's um, something your child uh, would be really interested in. We just finished one here in, in Theodore Library. So we had, um, considering again, where we've had, uh, we're still in restrictions, we had 70, over 70 entries to our Lego competition. It's actually fantastic to see them all displayed in the lexicon. And again, the children just really enjoyed coming back to the library to see their work, other, other children's work. And it was just, it was a really nice uh, feeling of um, normality and kind of harking back to 2019. So again, hopefully more of that to come. Many libraries as well have STEAM events and workshops. So STEAM would be similar to STEM, but in um, in art as part of the the vital um, scientific and, and technological um, resources that children and and um, educational um, education for children. Uh, again, these can be rain, um, uh, for all age groups. I've seen STEAM events for toddlers. I've seen uh, STEM events for teenagers. Um, we hosted STEM camps here for transitioner students uh, where they learned about how, how to um, invent and create prototypes um, of slightly out there um, uh, products that might, and then learn how to market them, present them to, to um, their, their fellow classmates and um, at a show at the end of it all. Um, many uh, libraries would have gaming clubs, including virtual reality, which is starting to get uh, more popular as well. And um, other creative workshops might be, depending on what your library can offer, is like teacher printing or vinyl cutting and um, 3D printing. A number of libraries would have a library set with a more technological um, lab space in it that would host these creative workshops. Um, we also have parent talks under the Healthy Ireland initiative. So it's not just for the children, but for the parents as well. So these can be everything for just generally uh, general parenting tips. Could be how to help your child sleep, healthy eating for your children, and um, how to help them for school and all the rest, or just general general um, ideas for yourself um, to gain. Uh, tips for parenting. So I know as a parent of two myself, it's always great to have um, someone to, um, to, to be able to get advice at all levels. So um, these are fantastic things to have offered at your library. And I've also mentioned now the Little Library Book Bags. These are, the new, are one of our newest initiatives and it's now linking in Montessori and childcare facilities to the library. So we've provided about 4,500 library bags for um, Montessori and childcare facilities. Uh, facilitators, excuse me, um, that are they are available to pick up these library bags from local libraries, and they contain um, usually about five books. Uh, one of them usually in Irish, and the rest in English, and it's just um, to encourage reading for young, very young children. Um, and those books, the um, and the children enjoy them. The parents can come in and rent um, similar books to those in their local library. And again, it's encouraging families to come to the library and, and use our facilities and enjoy using our facilities. Um, I'm also mentioning here Quinn Union Oak. I mentioned it earlier on. I think it deserves its own slide. So the Quinn Union Oak, it's an annual national day of free creativity for children and young people under 18. It's a relatively new initiative from Creative Ireland. I think it was June 2018 was the first one. Um, and so obviously um, we, there's only been two in-person Quinn Union Oaks. So the local authorities, um, especially through the libraries, they take part and produce free events and workshops, also supported by RTE. Um, everything is free and it's all aimed at just having fun and being creative for the children and families. Um, in 2020, because obviously we were had to go online, um, we hosted a three hour, I think it was, workshop uh, facilitated by Sarah Webb, which also included authors, illustrators and um, 
a book publisher, a children's book publisher. Um, we had 35 children who took part in it and didn't flag at all. They enjoyed every aspect of it, especially about learning about how books are published and trying to get their own books published. So it was it was just something, um, it was a fantastic thing we were able to offer, especially during the most restricted times um, during the lockdown. So in June, this is when we'd have Crony to Know, and you'll find that there's usually a lot of events going on in libraries, and hopefully this coming June, we'll be able to have more in-person events, we hope, fingers crossed, which would be fantastic. Um, so um, before I get on to useful links and tips, I just, I had gone, I went through, um, because it's not just, uh, because we're looking at libraries throughout Ireland, I went through just, um, just a quick, Around just to see the kind of examples of activities of libraries throughout Ireland, just to give you an idea of what's available. So, um, for instance, in Cork Libraries, they had Melissa Shields, who's a local heritage expert. She was live via Zoom and kind of giving a talk on living history, adventure, Viking history and armour. So it's living history for kids. In Kerry, as I said, they had a Lego building competition. Limerick has junior book clubs. Um, Claire, there was fighting words, creative writing workshops. Um, as I said, I'd mentioned fighting words already. Galway, the Ballon and Slow Library has a fantastic display for European Day of Languages. And Sligo, um, they were talking about the little library bags. Um, so as I said, one in Irish born English was the resources. Um, and the, as I said, the Little Library Initiative, it aims to develop a consistent link between early learning and care service and their local library to encourage a love of books and reading among young children. And in Mayo, so things I love, so it's a miniature bookmaking and illustration project with primary school children from Mayo and New South Wales in Australia with visual artist Kath McCarthy. So it just shows that there is so much an offer for our children and families around. And I don't know about you, the, the idea of doing miniature bookmaking, it's actually, I, I kind of wonder, could I pretend to be a primary school child in Mayo to be able to take part in that? Um, and as I said, in DLR libraries, we've had children's book illustrators. Um, currently at the moment in our junior, uh, the junior lexicon library, we have a children's book illustrators exhibition um, as well. It's just to make, to create a kind of, to, um, as I said, until this week, we had no seating available. So it was just to brighten up our junior library. We have our seating back. So we welcome back everyone to sit and enjoy and relax. Um, we also have just finishing up road, a series of Rodale Science Clubs via, via Zoom. Uh, there were three weeks and the children that got to pick up their kits and each week they got to make, um, have do science experiments based around Rodales. I think one of them was the Twits and another was BFG's kind of the fizzle pops. Um, but they're great fun. And I took part in another science workshop one time with, I think with the Harry Potter ones and you got to make great fun. Um, even as an adult, though I did end up with um, turmeric stained hands for a while afterwards. Um, but we also have had the Decade of Centenaries, um, one of our national initiatives through Creative Ireland. Um, and in like, so, that, so that would be um, celebrating the national but also local um, centenary celebration. So in 2016, it was 1916 Rising. And um, for us in 2018, I think it was, it was Sink. Um, we had, um, well, actually this year is the what's in its name, the change from Dunleer, from Kingstown to Dunleary. So we have a, um, a decade of a celebration on that. We also had our local oratory, um, beautiful um, Celtic work and a local um, children from the local primary school worked with one of the art um, artists, one of our artists, Mag Tarnett, to create a new mural based on that. So there is always something for children. So um, going forward, uh, useful links and tips. As I mentioned, Libraries Ireland is a fantastic central resource for parents. So um, if you go to libraries.ireland.ie, it has links to every library service, including their website and social media. Um, and you'll also be able to read up more about the, the national initiatives as well. Uh, Children's Books Ireland, as I mentioned before, childrensbooks.ireland.ie, I think it's the website for that. It is fantastic. They champion the love of reading for children. So they have the reading guides um, at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The latest one is just um, being published, the Free to Be Me. It's, um, so it's, it's just, it's recommending a diverse range of um, literature for children. Uh, and it's available in local libraries. But if you go to their website, childrensbooks.ireland.ie website, you'll be able to see a huge amount of resources for recommended readings for all types. It's definitely worth trying out um, or having a look at it. I'd also suggest sign up for your library's mailing list and check their website and social media regularly. That's when you'll hear first about the events and they can get booked very, very fast. But it'll give you a really good idea of what, um, what's going on. And as I said, 
sign up your library cards. It takes a few minutes. It's well worth investing. And I mean, this is this is our local one here. Do you see it? Possibly not. Um, and with this, as I said, you have access to 12 million items. You have access to even more um, uh, resources online. It's phenomenal. It's all for free. Um, and, and once you sign as parents, once you sign it up, you'll be able to sign up for your, your children as well. You can be guarantor. It takes a couple of minutes to do. It's well worth it. Um, and just lastly, just a few photographs here from the specific from Dunleary Red Sands of our creative um, events throughout the over the years. So this um this main one here, I'm not sure if you can see it, it's the welcome it, it's the school children. That was the mural they worked on um to do uh, with the in the oratory and with Max Harnett. Um the little children here creating pottery. I think that was during one of our family days in possibly June or October 2019. Um, and we can see music workshops here as well for families. And these are our plastic um our jellyfish um during the school that were um, exhibited in lexicon um, during the school workshops and um, our STEM camp um, and innovators and inventors down here. Um, so if you have any questions uh, and I can help, absolutely. If you're not sure if you want to, if you have any questions today or if you have one later, I have left my email here and you're welcome to email me uh, with any queries. I'd be happy to help as much as, much as I can. But thank you for listening. I hope you have um, gotten something from that. And as I said, if you have any questions, happy to help answer. Thank you so much, Erica. That was a, a really uh, fantastic uh, presentation. And it's it's just wonderful to be reminded of the diversity of what's going on in libraries and how much is available there for children and families. And I have to say, I absolutely love uh, the jellyfish. They, they, they look absolutely fantastic. Um, really, so really great. Nice. So um, I was going to hand over to uh, Liliana, who, who might have a couple of questions um, to put to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Eli. It was very informative presentation, so many activities. Um, before we go to the question and answer section, um, I would like uh, just to tell our attendees that we are also running a survey. Uh, as a part of the projects that we are doing. So we would really, really uh, like if you consider taking part in it. So it's it's a short survey about the creative activities that the children involved in, and we offer it in three different languages. So it's in English, Arabic, and Urdu. And if you have a Muslim background, we would really, really be grateful if you consider taking part. So I'll just post the link in the chat. And in the meantime, please do not hesitate to um, offer to ask questions that you have. Um, you can either post them in chat or maybe in the Q and A question. And while well, you're thinking a little bit, um, I just have my own question to Erica, if I may. Of course. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, uh, are there any books in, in, in different languages maybe? So that children could, you know, sometimes they want to say that, yeah, different languages. Oh, that's a very good question. And apologies for not bringing that, but yes, we do. Most library branches would have um, some uh, books in other languages. In the lexicon here, we have quite an extensive, we're very lucky because of our size, but we have quite an extensive um, range of um, books for children in different languages. And we just, uh, I think about a year and a half ago, um, we got a number of books in uh, well, French, Polish, Italian. Um, it's a quite popular book, but we have um, books in, in Sorry, excuse me, we have books from in, in a number of different languages. And it said, if we don't have one here, we'd be able to get it from um, certain from other libraries. For instance, our, one of our other branches, Jean's Range Library has an extensive Hungarian language. Um, and as my background is Hungarian, it was, it's, it's so nice to know that one of my local libraries has a Hungarian book there. Um, so yes, and as I said, if we don't have in the local branches, we would be able, I'm sure we'd be able to get it um, in uh, from another library or actually buy it in it's if it, it, um, we want our communities to be served so um, if you don't see a book in your language or a, a language you'd like your children to learn do you say it to the librarian um because i said we want to make sure our community is served well by our books that's great thank you so much erica thank you So if you have any questions, please just post them in the chat section or in the Q&A. 
And in the meantime, you also can see the links to the survey. Okay, I have a question, Erika. Um, so my question is about um, reading clubs. And um, you mentioned that um, it is possible to request for a, for a book club uh, for a group of children. I just, I was wondering how this would happen and what's the process. It's certainly, I mean, I can only speak really for CLR libraries, um, how we would work it, but it would absolutely, um, if there was um, a demand for it, especially if there's a few children already who would like to take part in book club, my advice to you is either in person speak with the local librarian or email the branches or the main um, library headquarters and ask would it be possible to set up. Again, we're there to serve the community. Um, so if there is demand, if, if, if we have, um, parents who um, or community group who would like something like this and we can and we can avail it and if we can set it up we will absolutely set it up we've had uh, we've said with teenagers we had a number of teenagers who really wanted to have a space so we um, got together we had fighting words and came in and did a series of workshops for our groups and we've had like even our adults we had um, over the time we had um, an online book club we've had a multiple sclerosis book clubs so it's different types and we, we host those um, obviously on Zoom at the moment, but hopefully in person soon. Um, and most libraries would really have something like a baby's book club. One of the branches at least would have it. It's one of the most popular of the book club types. Um, but absolutely uh, approach the library staff or librarian and um, or email and email even the library branch or the library headquarters and ask as much as possible. We're, as I said, we're there to serve the community. We want, we want the library to be your space. It's not. Our, it's not just the library staff space. In fact, it's not really our space. We're we're here. We're stewards of your community space, and that's that's the main thing to take from what libraries are. We're there for you. Thank you so much, um, Erica. That's that's just been fantastic, and and um, I think it's been a, a real eye opener um, to us all to see how much is going on in the library. Um, so. Uh, with that, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stop your screen sharing because I want okay. to put up um, a slide of our present, of, we, we've got, we're very lucky that we have another um, talk next Tuesday evening um, that I would like to tell the, the people who are here now about. It's um, a, a lady by the name of Jenny Sung from Chester Beatty, Dublin. <laughs> And she's, go she's going to um, give a talk entitled Every Museum Tells a Story. And she's going to talk about uh, children's activities in the Chester Beatty in, in Dublin. And where this, and that has a huge collection of Islamic, Asian, North African, East Asian and European uh, books and artifacts. And it's, a, it's actually a gorgeous little library um, and museum if uh, people haven't been there. So just to let people know about that. Um, so with that, we'll uh, say goodbye to our audience. Thank everybody for being here and particular thanks uh, to Erica for such a fantastic uh, presentation. Thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs>